Hey guys, sorry if I haven't posted anything in a while, but uh, for those of you that follow me, know that I just recently had open heart surgery, and then, well, a couple months after that, I went back in for another surgery, so that kind of slowed me down. But anyway, the primary physician says that I can go play on this again, or at least try to, just not loaded. In about another week, I guess, I go in for stress tests, and then I've got to spend a week unhooked to a monitor to find out whether or not I can actually take this loaded. But I did remember that I never showed this thing once it was put together, so I guess I'll just do that real quick. For anybody who's interested, I did put on these uh, trekking or butterfly bars, whichever term you prefer, which actually works pretty good for me because the way my hands set a little bit closer in like this, it doesn't hurt my sternum since it's just kind of wired together right now. So that's kind of a plus. Anyway, I've got the uh, phone mount where I got a flashlight in here I use for a headlight, simple bell. This mount here will either go with the uh, GoPro type cameras or I have a uh, MP3 player that goes on there. Cheesy looking Chinese mirror. I'm hoping that works better than the last ones I've tried. I have a stem riser on here and also the seat post is extended because I'm over six feet. And oh and by the way, the reason I have a bike with this geometry is because I have a bad right leg and right hip and I cannot get my leg over the straight top tubes anymore. So that's why I've got this cheesy old thing in the first place. In this little front rack here, I have a bag that goes on here. It's an expandable bag. This is just hooked on with under the brake boss and these worm drive hose clamps holding it on there. And these suspension forks that they put on these cheap bikes, well, they're already useless. So I made them more useless by pre-drilling a hole and then running one inch self-tapping screws on either side, so they're pretty much solid forks now. In the uh, racks for the uh, panniers in the front, these here are off of uh, universal water bottle cages. I just used the mounts for those on either side. Give me something to grab. I could have just used P-clamps or something, but that's what I had on my other bike and it seemed to work. I've got this uh, bottle here, which or bottle holder here, which is kind of cut weird, but that holds my fuel bottle. Tries to keep everything up and out of my fender. Oh, and the fenders are just standard Planet bikes. Tires on here are Schwalbe Land Cruisers, in case someone was interested. And the seat or saddle, whichever you prefer. This is actually a split saddle under here, but since I'm just getting right back on, it's kind of hard on the keister, so I have this temporary cover on there, which, which is uh, doing all right. Rear rack is just a cheap standard one. This hitch I made. As you can see, there's no real estate here to attach a hitch here anymore. So I welded this thing up and put it back here. I had it going this way, but there was no heel clearance when I pedals because the uh, frame's a little short. But anyway, this thing kind of works. I mean, I hardly ever ride, so, so this, this works out just fine. And if we do take these things, I guess the maximum distance we'll be doing is only 1,300, so not too bad. And I have all the bags for this. I'll just pop a picture in here what it looks like with the bags just kind of hanging on there. So you can kind of get an idea how it looks. But none of the bags are expensive. There's no Ortliebs or anything in there. They're just eBay purchases for the most part. Yeah. So on this side, I had a uh, M-Wave double leg kickstand on here. But for some goofy reason, it might be just the mount they have on here, where the kickstand normally goes. Yeah, as you can see, it's kind of chowdered out because I had it on here. But anyway, it, it had one of the legs was so close to my tire that if I took a real sharp corner, it actually just rubbed the edge of my tire, so I took it off. Those things don't work very well when the bike's heavily loaded anyway. So between this loaded up with bags and a trailer, if we end up taking the bikes, like I said, it'll be about 1,300 miles. And I'll also be pulling a pretty big trailer with this thing because we tried using the smaller tents, the small light ones, but the problem is my wife is kind of claustrophobic and she just really couldn't stand the things. She feels like she can't breathe in them. So our tent is one of those that have the uh, frames built in, so it's pretty long. I didn't want to mess with having to try to waterproof that or keep it dry when we're traveling. We got pillows and everything else up here. Just throw everything else in the trailer. But anyway, that's what it looks like. It's kind of fun to goof around with now that I can ride it again. I'll try to get uh, my arms and stuff back into 
the riding shape because I was riding that the other day and even with these handlebars being that high up I still feel it in my triceps so it'll take a while to get back into it we're gonna take these out to the desert with us anyway as long as the cardiologist approves because there's no hospitals or anything out there so see how that goes like I said we plan on just taking the minivan and loading the bikes and all the bike gear and a few other random camping items in there then we'll probably head out to like quartzite yuma parker you know that area and uh if that piece of junk falls apart we'll just pull the bikes out of the van load all our gear on here the weather clears up we'll uh head up probably like the 395 corridor even though the nights up there that time of year are still going to be in the teens and 20s so the nights will be chilly we'll just have to see how that goes anyway I guess I should get my uh, happy butt on here and do a couple of laps. And uh, I'll catch you guys later. Bye.